So in the last class, uh, we have seen that uh, the local stiffness matrix, the local body force, nodal equivalent body force vector and nodal equivalent surface force vector in the case where uh, the element shares an edge SE with the uh, surface of the body being modeled uh, are given by these expressions. So these are standard expressions that we are going to use uh, no matter what kind of element is employed <coughs> to solve the problem. Now, uh, we are also discussed that the whole idea of doing the isoparametric formulation is to affect a change in variables here. These are these each of these b's and n's are functions of x and y. So we can also treat them as functions of r and s where r and s uh, can be mapped, each x and y can be mapped to an R and S in the isoparametric formulation. And the advantage of doing that is that these integrals, these integrals, at least these two we have encountered, uh, these integrals convert into integrals which are to be evaluated over a fixed domain. So in a two-dimensional system uh, for a rectangular parent element, the domain is always minus 1 to 1 for R and minus 1 to 1 for S. So these first two integrals are evaluated through this where the change of variable from dV to dr dS is, uh, is represented by J times dr dS. So this is the result of the change of, uh, change of variables from dx dy to dr dS. This J comes into picture and as a result of which we gain the advantage that the domain over which we have to integrate is always fixed. So now the question remains as to how do we evaluate these integrals over a fixed domain. To do that, uh, we will learn about an integration technique that you can implement on your computer and we will first learn it in the one dimensional setting. So we are we will we will look at uh, integrating something like minus one to one uh, fx fx dx. So uh, what how do we integrate this kind of an integral? So uh, the idea is simple. The idea is suppose you have an integral which is uh, which is from x1 to x2 of fx dx and then uh, you can easily convert this to an integral from minus 1 to 1 by a simple change of variables. So if you make a change of variables from x to r so that x is equal to half 1 minus r x1 plus half 1 plus r x2 if you make this change of variable from x to r then you can see that when x is equal to x1 r is equal to minus 1 when x is equal to x2 r is equal to plus 1. So uh, if you plug this x into, uh, into here then uh, let us suppose that fx is equal to phi r at, uh, at uh, each value of r. So uh, if that is so then this integral due to this change in variables would become an integral from minus 1 to 1 phi r dr where phi r and fx have the same values at uh, the r corresponding to this x. Now uh, let's suppose this is that function phi r from minus 1 to 1 and then uh, as a crude approximation of this of the area under this curve which is which is this area that we actually want to find this is our i this is the area that we want to find we can approximate that by a rectangle of height phi 0 of height phi 0 situated at r equal to 0 in that case the width of this rectangle is going to be 2 and the integral would be approximately equal to 2 phi naught. This would be a very crude approximation but we can we can immediately see that if phi r is a straight line, 
if I r is a linear curve, which goes, let's say, like this, if I r is a linear curve, then this approximation actually will give you the right answer for the integral. So, taking this idea forward, uh, what we can what we can say that for one point this 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 method of estimating the area under a curve by the area of a rectangle is known as gauss quadrature and this approximate formula is for one point gauss quadrature where we call phi 0, that means r equal to 0 as the sample point. So we sample the value of the integral there. And the width of the width of the rectangle uh, w is equal to equal to 2. And this w is called a weight corresponding to this sample point. So uh, Generalizing this, we can we can think of doing something like this. Say uh, your phi r is this, then instead of doing a one-point Gauss quadrature, we can do a two-point Gauss quadrature, where we sample the value of the function at r1, and so phi r1 is the sampled functional value. Phi r2 is the sampled functional value at the second sampling point, and then at each of the sampling points, we fit two thinner rectangles of width W1 and W2 so that the total area of these two rectangles is equal to the area under the curve. So this is the idea and we can do it for more than two as well. In fact, if we do it for n Gauss points, then um, there would be n Gauss number of sampling points Ri and each of them will have a width or weight which is equal to Wi and I'll, uh, I'll estimate the integral i phi dr minus 1 to 1 as a summation which is basically the areas of these rectangles put together. So uh, this is the idea of Gauss quadrature and now uh, we need to see how to determine how to determine these weights and these sampling points for a certain order of Gauss quadrature, say for uh, second order Gauss quadrature or two point Gauss quadrature, which is shown here, what would be the value of R1 and R2 and what would be the corresponding values of W1 and W2? How do we find that? And how do we find that for even uh, higher order Gauss quadratures where you use 3, 4, 5 points. And uh, what kind of curves, what kind of curves phi r can be integrated exactly by what order of Gauss quadrature? For example, we saw here that a linear curve would be exactly integrated even if we use a first order Gauss quadrature where the sampling points are 0 and the weights, weight is 2. So similarly, uh, can we make some statement about what kind of, <coughs> what kind of phi r would be integrated by what order of Gauss quadrature? These are the questions that we will try to, uh, try to answer now.